Hey everyone, my name is Christian Walsh. I'm a CFI here at Sling Pilot Academy. And today we're going to talk about the four left turning tendencies and what they are and how it affects you in your aircraft. All right, so number one is torque. For every force, there is an equal and opposite force. So the effect of torque is the opposite of what's happening with the propeller. So as you look at it, as in the pilot's perspective, the blades are turning to the right, which is clockwise, which means the opposite reaction is going to be a left turn in the roll. So because of this clockwise turn, we have a counterclockwise turn of the aircraft. So this is the equal and opposite reaction working together. So right turn, left turn with the plane here. So that's torque, that's the effect of torque. Okay, so number two is called spiraling slipstream. So in an aircraft, when it's moving forward through the sky, as this blade is moving around, it is creating this corkscrew effect. That's what the FAA call it, is a corkscrew effect. And as it moves the air, as the air comes through the blade, and it's going over the airframe, moving clockwise, it moves around the aircraft like this in a spiral. And that's what's called the spiraling slipstream. So because of this turning motion, and the spiral that it creates as it hits the vertical stabilizer, it's now gonna push on the back of this vertical stabilizer and create a left turn as well. So this is what is our second left turning tendency. All right, so number three is P factor. So P factor is the difference in blade angles to the relative wind. So simply put, when you're flying straight and level, the descending blade to your right and the ascending blade to your left both have the same effect. So when you're straight and level, the angle of attack to the relative wind stays the same. But when you change your angle of attack to the relative wind that's coming toward the aircraft, you can see the right side has a much larger angle. This creates more lift on the right side of the propeller, causing the plane to your left. All right, so number four is called gyroscopic precession. So just like a gyroscope in our six pack of instruments, it's essentially a spinning disc. This isn't really a phenomenon that happens in a tricycle. This happens in a tail dragger. So when you're flying a tail dragger in the takeoff, what they need to do is pitch the aircraft down so they can bring the back of the aircraft up and bring that tail dragger off the ground. When this happens, it creates a moment at the top of the propeller where there's a force applied. So as that force is applied, it is felt 90 degrees from that point of origin. So if it's pushed here, it's actually felt 90 degrees to the right of the clockwise turning propeller, which gives us another yaw moment, which is another turning tendency. So an example of this, you might find this in a normal classroom in an aviation school, is as the blade is turning to the right, if I was to pitch forward, it actually wants to turn to the left. This is involuntary from me. So if I do that again, spinning this forward, it turns to the left. This is how helicopters fly. It's all the same principle. Like I said, it doesn't happen in a tricycle as much, or really at all, but this is important for a, a tail dragger, this principle. To summarize, all these four left turning tendencies that you see and that you'll feel in the plane don't happen all at once. They can happen at different phases of flight, but where these are most pronounced is when you're at a low airspeed and you have a high RPM and you're creating a lot of airflow, a lot of torque, and that could be when you're in the takeoff roll. So you have a forward slow speed, you have a high amount of air moving across the aircraft. And that's when you get these, which you will counteract by doing a little bit of right rudder. Now that we've gone over the basics, Sling Pilot Academy co-owner and aerobatic pilot, Matt Lichnitsky, is going to explain how these left turning tendencies are even more prominent while flying aerobatics. We're really happy at Sling Pilot Academy to be adding a super decathlon to our fleet. Uh, the Super Decathlon will allow us to explore spins uh, to a higher level with our students and pilots and instructors and will allow us to explore basic aerobatics and upset recovery training. Um, the pursuit of aerobatics is really important in your journey to mastering flight. Aerobatics allows you to explore much more of the envelope of flight than you do during normal flying. Aerobatics uh, takes you from below the stall speed of the airplane to its VNE. Uh, all through all flight regimes, pitch attitudes, and bank angles, and uh, it allows you to really master flight to a high degree. For example, uh, learning about left turning tendencies can seem pretty academic and theoretical when you're just doing normal flight, but during aerobatics, it becomes a very practical thing that you have to deal with and correct for at all times, and you become very aware of how they all interact with each other. For example, 
in a simple aerobatic maneuver like a hammerhead, where we're going to pull vertical, we're going to get to, to a very close to zero speed at the top, we're going to uh, kick it over and then come straight back down again. During that one maneuver, we start out at a very high speed, maybe at high, 160. So when we pull up, we had 160. At that speed, the aerodynamic uh, forces that our controls are able to exert on the airflow keep us straight and stable and counteract a lot of the left turning tendencies we've been talking about. As we start slowing down, our spiraling slipstream, which um, extends around the fuselage, uh, begins to bunch up. So as we start slowing down, the spiraling slipstream bunches up and starts applying a greater and greater force on the vertical tail. Um, and if uncorrected, will lead to the airplane yawing to the left like this. And you notice the, uh, this force getting stronger and stronger as you, as you uh, ascend on a vertical line, and the airplane will begin to yaw to the left. So the, the way we remedy that is we start applying an increasing amount of right rudder, and that makes the airplane ascend vertically. At the same time, uh, the torque of the, of the engine and prop, the propeller spinning uh, clockwise, it, it makes the airframe want to rotate counterclockwise. At high speed, that's a very negligible effect. But as you start slowing down, the airplane is going to begin to roll to the left. Uh, so the remedy for that is you have to add an increasing amount of right aileron. So with, with no application of right rudder and right aileron on the upline, uh, when you pull up, the airplane will begin rolling to the left and yawing to the left, and you'll end up flying other than a vertical up in no time. But with the application of increasing amount of right stick and an increasing amount of right rudder, uh, you'll be able to counteract those forces and keep it flying vertically upwards. Then when we get to the top and we close to zero airspeed, we kick full left rudder to rotate the airplane on this axis, on the vertical axis. Um, at this point, we're applying a force on the right side of the spinning prop disc, the gyroscope. And that translates, because the, the, the propeller is spinning clockwise, it translates 90 degrees later to a force on the bottom of the disc that wants to tip the nose over like that. So if we simply kick full left rudder, uh, to rotate the airplane at the top of the hammerhead, it'll fall over onto its back as we go over the top. So to counteract that, as we kick full left rudder, we apply a, a decent amount of forward stick to hold the nose down, and that'll allow the airplane to rotate on its vertical axis and uh, not flop out of the sky and then fly downwards. So in that, that one maneuver, as we've reached the top of the hammerhead, we've learned more about spiraling slipstream, gyroscopic precession um, and torque effects uh, than we could ever have learned theoretically from books uh, or just um, academically. So that's one of the reasons why we love aerobatics so much and why we want everyone to master to some degree uh, the art of aerobatics and controlling the airplane uh, through much more of its envelope than a normal flight. If there's anything you'd like to add or if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments section of this video and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the air.